Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark, another Mad Movie Mark movie review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1939 Western Spectacular Stagecoach. Stagecoach, along with a couple other big box office westerns, were credited with saving the genre from the brink of extinction. During the 1920 silent movie era, there were hundreds of westerns that were created. This led to a saturation in the marketplace and led for people to believe that there were no longer any unique ideas for this genre. Uh, this led to production companies no longer wanting to uh, provide a large budget for these movies, directors no longer wanted to direct them, and actors no longer wanted to act in them. Westerns were considered a B-level genre at this point. That was until John Wayne and John Ford decided to join together in not only as one of the most exciting Westerns of all time, but also one of the most historically important Westerns of all time. You may need me in this Winchester, Curly. When Orson Welles was creating Citizen Kane. He said he watched Stagecoach numerous times so he can really get an idea of how to make a good movie, how to film it, how to write it, and how to direct it. And I think that this is uh, incredible because Citizen Kane is one of the most famous movies of all time, and I bet not a lot of people know about Stagecoach or consider it on a high tier as Citizen Kane. So this movie is not John Wayne's first movie that he was ever in. He was in other movies, but this is the movie that catapulted his career. This is the movie that really made him a household name. Uh, besides John Wayne, it also stars Thomas Mitchell. Thomas Mitchell was in another movie that I reviewed called Only Angels Have Wings. In that movie, he was an alcoholic and a pilot. In this movie, he's an alcoholic and he is also a doctor. A fine member of the medical profession. Drunken beast. So he pretty much plays an alcoholic and then some profession in every movie that he's in. I'll also say that I'm kind of nearing the end of the 1939 movies. I have one more for my uh, Rotten Tomatoes challenge, and almost all of them have an alcoholic in them. Uh, they're either supposed to be a comic relief, and that's why they're drinking alcohol, or they're supposed to be a jerk, and that is also why they're drinking alcohol. So apparently you couldn't do either one of those in the 1930s unless you were drunk. Besides John Wayne and Thomas Mitchell, uh, it also stars Claire uh, Trevor as Dallas, Andy Devine as Buck, and John Carradine as Hatfield. So another reason why this movie is so historically important, it's one of the first big movies that brought in this idea of bringing uh, different uh, characters in a movie together from different backgrounds, different professions, different levels of society into one room, or in this case, one stagecoach. And throughout the whole movie, you kind of learn who they are. You learn what their motives are. You learn really who they are as people. You might have, or you probably do have an opinion of them when the movie first starts, but then at the end of the movie, your opinion of them definitely changes. Three cheers for old Doc Boone. Hip, hip. Uh, this is also seen, I would say, in 12 Angry Men, but this movie came out before 12 Angry Men, and this kind of was the launch pad for other movies to do this later on. Uh, so when we first uh, see this movie, we have a stagecoach. We are in the Arizona territory. The stagecoach is going to uh, New Mexico. Uh, the stagecoach has a banker uh, who is a high level in the town. Uh, he holds a very prominent position, a prostitute who does not hold a prominent position, uh, a gambler, uh, also uh, kind of the seedy part of the town, a uh, doctor who you would believe holds a high position, but like I said earlier, he's also an alcoholic, and uh, a pregnant lady who is also uh, traveling as well. So uh, they're traveling through town, you're learning who they are, they kind of get a little ways and they run into uh, kid, the Rico Kid. The Rico Kid is John Wayne's character. He has just broken out of jail. His brother and his father were killed by a gang of vigilantes. Uh, he knows he has to go back to jail, but first he wants to enact his revenge and kill these people who killed his family. Uh, the sheriff on the stage coast arrests him, and uh, John Wade says, well, you know, I wouldn't be so hasty here because I saw a group of Apaches coming our way, and I am really good with a gun, so you should probably uh, not handcuff me and not arrest me, and I will help you kill these Apaches. Uh, they don't, they, they are sure that there are Apaches coming, but they believe they can handle it themselves, so they decide to arrest him and to not allow him to go. Uh, so they get to another town, and they're expecting to see a lot of officers, a lot of army officers, a lot of uh, people who are there protecting the town. But they've all been ran away by Indians, by Apaches. So uh, they're a little worried at this point. Uh, they decide to 
uh, like bunker down in the town. Uh, one of the ladies has a baby. The doctor delivers her baby. And then John Wayne and uh, a female member of the stagecoach just all of a sudden kind of strike up a relationship. Uh, John Wayne says, you know, I got a nice piece of land and uh, I know that you don't have a family and I don't have a family, but you know, why don't you, why don't we go ahead and live on my land? It's across the border. That's a nice place, a real nice place. Trees, grass, water. There's a cabin half built. A man could live there. And a woman. Now, for me, this kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't really see this relationship uh, transpiring or this relationship coming together. It just kind of happens because he is lonely and she's lonely. So he feels, you know, like, why don't we just live together? And that way we won't be lonely anymore. Uh, she likes the idea. She says, but I don't even know you. You don't even know me. He says, ah, oh, that's true. But, you know, we'll get to know each other. So they decide that uh, once he gets out of jail, he gets back to town. He enacts his revenge. He gets out of jail. Then they will live together. She will go to his ranch and live there now. And then he'll come in later and live there with her. Um, so after the baby is born, after he... Uh, confesses his undying love to her. They get back into the stagecoach and they're met by just a fierce barrage of Apache. Uh, the Apache are attacking them from all angles. There is a really cool scene uh, where and I read, I had to read trivia on this because I didn't think that this was actually real the way it was done. But there's a really awesome scene where there's an Apache that's killed and he kind of like goes between the horses, between the horses and under the stagecoach and comes out the other side. And I was thinking, well, we, we don't have CGI back then, so this couldn't possibly have been real. But when I read trivia, they did it in one take. It was real. Uh, the stuntman said, did we get it? And John Ford says, I don't care if we got it. I'm never doing that again. So uh, it's actually absolutely spectacular. Once you realize that's real and they actually did this with real horses and a real stagecoach, it is insane. I don't know how they were able to drive the stagecoach the way they did and get that shot and everything be perfect and the guy not die. Um, I'm posting some uh, sort of clips of, movie, of the movie on here, but I'm not going to post that clip because I think you should really see it in real time because it's absolutely amazing. So they end up dealing with the Apaches. Uh, a couple of them don't make it. They uh, unfortunately end up dying. Um, they get to the uh, town in New Mexico uh, the kid, Rico kid, is able to enact his revenge. Uh, he is able to kill all three vigilantes at once, sort of in like a good, bad, and the ugly type of manner. But obviously this predates that. And then um, he says, okay, I've uh, got my revenge. Now I'm ready to go back to jail. And then the... Um, the sheriff decides that I'm not going to send you back to jail. I'm going to let you go away and have a nice life with this woman. You've gotten your revenge. I don't think that you are the outlaw that people claim that you are. So I'm going to give you a second chance and you can go live your life with this woman. And that's basically how the movie ends. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie. There are some times in this movie where it is a little bit slow, uh, but the action sequences are great. Um, Considering they really went out into like an open prairie and drove the stagecoach and did these scenes. And I just think it's all spectacular. It definitely does set the stage for later Westerns, later John Wayne Westerns. And John Ford is a huge, he's widely known for his Westerns. I mean, he did a lot of different types of movies. A lot of his movies, actually, I think most of his movies have to do with American life and like uh, how the American plight and Americans uh, throughout the ages. But he did a lot of Westerns and this is kind of his uh, stepping stone for his great Westerns. And it is fantastic. Uh, John Wayne is great in this movie, like he is in pretty much every movie that he's in. My only gripe about this movie, and it's because of the times this happened during those times, uh, but they are really 
terrible to Apaches and to uh, Native Americans in general. Uh, they don't really give them any type of backstory. They don't really talk about their plight or, you know, they had some rough goings and now they want their land back. So they're going to fight us when we get out into the middle of the prairie. Uh, it's basically these are a group of rabid savages with rabies and they're going to rape and murder our women and light our stagecoaches on fire with tomahawks and arrows and bows and uh, Geronimo, the great Apache, is going to kill us in our sleep. Um, and that's basically what it is. And sure, they get attacked by uh, by these Apache, but I mean, they were technically on Apache land at one point. So um, I know a lot of movies did this. It's just the era. But it's still, you know, it's hard to go back and watch these type of movies and realize that the Apaches went through a really hard time getting all their land taken away from them. And, you know, I think I would have been a little disgruntled at that time, too. Uh, but anyway, besides that uh, kind of scar on American history, um, the movie's really great. I, like I said, the acting's fantastic. The cinematography is absolutely amazing. Like I said, they're out in the actual open prairie. They're filming the wagon. Uh, you know, they're able to keep up with it. Uh, that scene, that scene where the guy goes under the wagon is just incredible. Um, I give this movie a 9 out of 10. I recommend it to anyone who just really wants to watch a good Western, one of the first greatest Westerns uh, ever created. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.